Hey, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. Now, I've been playing Sin and Sacrifice, but after I've completed that mission, what I did was, I thought I'll go back and revisit Broken Alliance, which is a major campaign DLC that was implemented um, late last year. As a result of which, the added stuff like veterancy and radio chatter does give it a bit of added depth and that's what it's all about a little bit more immersion and new units so i thought i'd go back and take a look expected guest to the cic and this is the executive operations of colonial fleet commander this is prince stefan duke of hadrian of the royal family of virgon just stefan there's a time and a place for pleasantries the middle of a spiraling war is not one of them so straight to business Virgon Intelligence suspects an attack on the Leonid V-Day celebration. We trust our sources, but they have not yet gathered specifics on how the attack will proceed. My personally being here should imprint upon you the severity of our concerns. Virgon saboteurs will be blamed, and the Corn Alliance will deviate into squabbling and infighting. We require the impartiality of Colonial Fleet to intervene on Virgon's behalf. Commander, you will send an investigative force to monitor the event. Be prepared for anything. The last thing we need right now is a diplomatic fiasco with the 12 colonies watching. So we've had a little bit of story about a ceremony of, of V-Day um, and we're going to jump into the system and we're going to do that mission. Doing that particular mission is going to unlock the Assault Raptor. Something that I've not really used a hell of a lot in this game. But I thought, well, hey, might as well do it now. Like I'm having such good fun with the game after Sin and Sacrifice. That going through and doing the Broken Alliance missions and starting again. And getting my missions and all the rest of it saved up. I think, well, we'll do, do me a bit of good. So here we are. Then we've had the story from Lucinda Kane and Prince Stefan and everybody else. And we've got our fleet in position. Now, I'm mostly, because I'm very early on in the game. Um, using Artemis Battle Stars and then an Adamant as well. So good missiles um, and squadron deployment from the Artemis. But the whole idea of this is, right? The whole idea of this is not to destroy the ships that are going to be opening fire against me because they're ceremonial ships. And as we'll find out in this video, they're needed as evidence. But also protect as many transports or civilian transports that are in the area as I can. Now, they're going to be fired upon, right, by the ceremonial ships that are placed. And you can see the marks here on the startup screen, on the staging screen. Now, we know the Cylons are going to jump in as well, right? Prepare so, three, you know, two, we know what's going to happen. One. So here we go. We're jumping in. There's our battle stars, our frigates. Jump of civilian marks no hostiles showing undrated i've got leona's officials asking why we're here but nothing else out of the ordinary so so far so good everything's in place gonna spread out the fleet gonna make sure we got good arcs of fire to see what goes on um we're gonna have a look at where those civilian ships by the Virgon station are as well. We're going to start moving them away from that towards the Daedalus um, out of harm's way. Now, with this mission, what's very important is elevation. Getting those elevation angles right to avoid any missiles that are going to be fired from those other ships. That's going to happen within the next couple of turns. Right, so here we go. Doing a bit of manoeuvring. Getting our battle stars in place as well. We're going to start to launch some squadrons. We've got some raptors as well in play. So we're going to get the raptors launched as well. Just in case anything funky happens. Right, okay, here we go. So we're doing a very sort of tight circle there with those civilian transports. Wider arc with this one. Move that down into a smaller arc. So we can do a quick turn and get out of the way. So I'm going to move my smaller ship, my frigate, that adamant. Out the way, of course, the, the Adamant has got a fighter squadron and it's got side guns yes. um, and, you know, a, a missile capability. A strong little ship 
for adamant, but not there for huge staying power. That's why, you know, we've got the Artemis class battle styles that can take a bit more of a pounding. The Artemis, of course, um, reminiscent of the 1970s version of Battlestar Galactica. We now launch all their squadrons, two squadrons per Artemis Battlestar. So far, so good. Okay, so here we go, ending that turn. All fantastic. Here we got the transport ships moving. What's with the scrap beat? I thought this event was supposed to be fancy. Don't besmirch the scrap beat. They're bringing attention to those ceremonial ships. Now he knows something's going to be up with those. I served aboard one myself for a small time. It is a strange choice for a memorial centerpiece, however. We don't make them like that anymore. Would have taken a nuke to get through that many layers of armor. Unfortunately, they were plentiful back then as well. So there you have it. We've got some really old Janus cruisers laying around as part of this ceremony. We've got the civilian ships in the area. Everyone's saying how old the Janus cruisers are, but they're very tough, very tough on the armor, that a nuclear warhead is the only thing that could penetrate them, really stay long in a fight, and you get a little bit of history and a little bit of backstory. Still moving those civilian ships out the way, all that's going to be fine. Still positioning our battle stars as well. Intercept attackers and incoming munitions is what we're going to do for our Viper squadrons to start guarding those civilian ships. Okay, slight adjustments now. We've got our Raptor group out in the area. And my plan here is to move those civilian ships way out of the way, giving us extra time for when the missiles get fired from those particular ships, those Janus class cruisers. And then what we're going to do is, is we're going to get a Viper screen um, behind it because those transports can't take the hits, whereas our Battle Stars can take a little bit more of the hits as it is. Now we're not going to be able to save them all Sir, unfortunately or I have tried this munitions. quite a few times and I, I haven't be been able Commander. to save them all. Here we can see the Janus cruisers, the old cruisers are starting to open fire now with torpedoes. A huge spread of torpedoes, look. That's really going to spoil people's day. Of course they're saying no don't destroy them because we need them as evidence. It wasn't Vergon Honest Gov is what they're saying. And that's Prince Stefan saying, I've got to basically cover my own back in regards to, you know, it wasn't us who opened fire and destroyed those people. Of course, we've got Sinon. Sinon Quaid saying, ah, well, don't go destroying them because basically, you know, well, don't destroy them. It's a waste. Okay, there we go. So we're trying to move our transports out of the way and try and save as many as we possibly can also those torpedoes can really wreck your day should there be any ships caught in in their firing line so like i say it's going to be all about elevation it's all going to be about making sure instead of just you know your left and right you've got to think three-dimensionally that's effectively what um what's going on here oh and here come the cylons Surprise, surprise, everybody. The Cylons have jumped in, and not just one or two. Quite a few Cylons. I mean, so far, playing this campaign has been great, because revisiting the old campaign with all the additional features that have been put on, not only the ships as well from the reinforcement pack, has really sort of fleshed this out. I mean, this entire campaign we're seeing now, I think... Um, it's a little bit challenging. You jump in, you've got the station, there's these ships there that you think are just deserted and they just make it all look nice. 
in a ceremonial basis. They open fire. Obviously, they've been sort of like, well, we say obviously, we don't know yet, but they've been tinkered by, by the Cylons. We've seen this when going through the Sin and Sacrifice campaign, On it, Commander. where old derelict ships uh, have been then manipulated to fire on colonial vessels. And then when you're distracted by them and, you know, all the transports that you're currently protecting start taking hits and you're very preoccupied with those, then the Cylons jump in. Missiles incoming. So then you're fighting something on two fronts. Now the Cylons that are going to jump in at this phase, I'm not that bothered about. I really am not. Um, you know, there's going to be Arachnes, there's going to be a few other smaller Cylon ships that, you know, will take... We won't take that much of a pounding from the battle stars that I've got in place. I mean, the Artemis battle star is a mainstay. I mean, the newer battle star that you get a little bit later on in the game, the Minerva. I mean, it, it's a light battle star, right? Um, it can't take the punishment. I don't think that the Artemis battle stars can. I mean, the newer battle stars, yes, it's got two fighter squadrons. Yes, it's got two missile banks. But the Artemis, you know, what's modeled on that old 1970s Battlestar Galactica, what we enjoyed from, you know, the old um, Lawn Green Battlestar Galactica as, as a dammer. And Richard Hatch and Dirk Benedict, of course, in Apollo and Starbuck. You know, that that's a heavy hitter. It's a mainstay, right? I mean, yes, it's underpowered. Yes, it's old. Um, but it, it's like what you get with the Vipers and the Viper Mark II. The Viper Mark I, you get loads of them and they're tougher but only deal out, I think it's 0 0.3 damage. With the newers, the newer Mark II that you can upgrade to, you only get a few of them. I think it's 12, perhaps. I mean, you don't get as many as you do with the Mark I. Um, they can take as much damage, and but they dish out slightly more damage at 0 0.4. So, you know... Swings and roundabouts sometimes, and I think this has been the, the entire thing all the way through Battlestar Galactica. Understood. The old Jupiter class Battlestar, that the Battlestar Galactica, it survived. And look at the pounding that it took all the way through that series. And that's what's good about it as well, right? If you look at the things like Star Trek and Star Wars, then the damage on the ships magically gets repaired by the next episode, especially on Star Trek. I mean, look where Voyager was stuck, all the way over in the Delta Quadrant. Um, took a right paste in, whole plating everywhere, things blowing up, stains on the carpet. Next week's all gone. What, do they have a vax or something? We just don't know. But like in Battlestar, it was the continuity of damage on the ship. Just right the way from the first hit from a nuclear warhead that it took in the miniseries, that was there all the way through the series for four years. All the explosions... That was done in the episode Water. Um, all these things added to the character of the ship and giving it a very sort of used universe. There was no dry dock. There was no help coming. Same effectively what was happening in Star Trek Voyager. There was no Starfleet dry dock. Oh, yes, but they had a replicator. Right, so you're going to replicate a hull panel, are you? Perhaps they did. Perhaps that was the whole thing about it. Not so much in Battlestar Galactica. You took a pasting and that was it. But the Jupiter took a hell of a pasting. Now, it would be interesting to see whether, you know, ships like the Pegasus, the Saturn class, would have taken that much of a pasting without showing as much damage. Bearing in mind the Pegasus was there at the Scorpion shipyards when the attack came in, which we saw in Razor, didn't seem to be that much damage on the outside of the ship, right? Anyway, where I'm coming from is I think the older ships, they're the old war hose horses, they can take a hell of a lot of a battering. Um, whereas some of the more technical ships, they're going to fall short. I saw a little bit of rant on the ships of Battlestar Galactica there. You know, indulge me what, <laughs> if there's anybody listening. So I'm still focusing fire. I'm still taking out um, the remaining uh, Cylons. What I'm doing with the transports now is I'm moving the elevation up and down. So when they fire their missiles, move the elevation up. I mean, in fact, they're not missiles, they're torpedoes. So they, they work on a fixed elevation and not homing torpedoes, because you only get homing missiles. Uh, and that way then I'm able to, providing I can judge it right with the distance from the ship and the speed the missiles come in or torpedoes come in, 
Um, I can change the elevation and not get hit. It's if I forget about something. And I'm only down to two transports now as well. And these missiles are still starting to come in all the time. Well, I'm giving the Cylons a good pace, and there's two Cylon marks on the board that still haven't been revealed yet. And they're setting off mines left and right. So I try and get my, my Raptor squadrons out to disable those mines at the same time. So far, so good. I've only lost one Artemis. And I say I've lost, only lost one Artemis. I've still got their squadrons in play. Two Viper squadrons, which I've got on protection on the transports. Um, the Adamant, the good old tough little frigate, the Adamant frigate is still going so far. Good guns on the side of those, has to be said, and a missile bank, and a squadron. You can't really go wrong with them, and early on in the game, they make up the mainstay of your fleet. It's only until you start unlocking the battle stars when I think things really get, you know, to a huge fleet battle area. Now, one thing I've done on here, my current commander on the Daedalus, um, I've got locked at 7,000 command points. He needs to be bigger than that. He needs a little bit more. So I might ship him out to a different battle group and bring somebody else in and give them a bit more experience as I'm going through the campaign. And of course here as well, I can't go over there and take out the Janus cruisers. What I didn't try doing, and I don't think you can do, I don't think you can send your Raptor squadrons over to those ships. Theoretically, you should have been able to say, right, I've got a Raptor squadron, I'll send them over to the Janus ceremonial ships uh, that are firing on me, they'll disarm them, and that will take them out of the equation. I wasn't able to do that on this mission, although, to be fair, I don't think I tried that hard. Um, when I scrolled through, th through the ships that I could board, I didn't see the Janus ceremonial cruisers there. And that might be, you know, something that could be changed on the mission posthumously, perhaps in season two. That could be a case if something, that, if a mission very similar to this is brought out in season two of Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. Apparently, Black Lab and Slytherin are working on season two of this. So, you know, hey, great stuff. I wonder when that's going to hit us. So, another Cylon bites the dust. We've still got two transports. We're going to try and board something. We'll board that other Cylon ship and try and take them out a bit. But so far, losses have been minimal on this mission. But I'm enjoying it. And this also unlocks as I've mentioned before, the Assault yes, Raptor. Sir. Which has missiles, not rockets. Um, you know, it's more of a battle-hardened bus. I think they call it in Blood and Chrome. And you know, Blood and Chrome, that really should have got a bit more extra traction, I think, um, from the franchise. It, it should never have just been a pilot. It's a lost opportunity there for sci-fi, and we're seeing that now with the recurrence and resurgence of Star Trek. Not only have we got the Picard um, Star Trek follow-on to the next generation of that Picard timeline, uh, but you know, we've also got Star Trek Discovery as well. Everyone's calling for a Captain Pike and young Spock early Enterprise series, and that's going to be a missed opportunity. Same with Battlestar Galactica. They can turn around and they can reimagine it, you know, I think it's too early to do a reimagination of the Battlestar Galactica universe, even in a film. I mean, which timeline are they going to follow? Are they going to follow this timeline? Uh, are they going to follow the original 1970s timeline? Um, I don't know. And if they followed that timeline and, and did, you know, and didn't do a reboot and did something a little bit in the form of a... Um, what's the word I'm trying to say? The ship's going to be drastically different. Is that going to affect Battlestar Galactica Deadlock? If it's a continuation, a sequel, then how are the ships going to evolve? Um, how are the Cylons going to evolve? Interesting. It'd be interesting how many seasons Black's, Black Lab's 
and Slytherin have got planned for this game. I mean, the game dynamics have certainly evolved as such since um, the game first came out in 2018. But where can it go from here, really? Difficult to say. Very difficult to say. So, missiles are, are inbound. We've still only lost one Artemis Battlestar. Still when the Cylon has not revealed themselves. But with the amount of ships I've got in play, I'm going to be able to circle around on the unrevealed Cylon with the missiles that I've still got in reserve and give it a good pasting. I'm still doing course yes, corrections as well in regards to the transports. Yes, to try and keep two transports alive. And the two that got taken out, I really don't know what I could have done with those, to be honest. Um, I think we were always going to lose some on this level. Squadron has gone dark. So we're being hit by missiles left and right. Hit by mines that the sneaky Cylons are arming in our wake. With this defend the transports and, you know, don't destroy the ceremonial Janus cruisers. Good. You know, it wasn't as easy as what I thought it was going to be. And as a result of which, what you got to think about is that how challenging can a game be? I think Battlestar Galactica Deadlock with all the DLC and all the additions that you've put on is a challenging game. Some may argue with that. I don't. I think it's great. Here come the torpedoes in. We're going to move people up out the way and off to the right towards the top of the screen. And there's going to be a time with there's that Cylon. He's revealed himself. He's boarded. We've got a Raptor squadron in there degrading its systems. And when I say degrading, you know, any help Understood. the Raptor squadrons can give us, the better, I think. Let's get the turn ended. We're taking a bit of a pounding on that one particular transport. Just caught the tail end of the missiles fired off by those Janus cruisers. Or Janus cruisers. Janus, Janus, Janus. I don't know. I'm going to go with Janus. Understood. Right, let's make sure none of our battle stars hit each other. That would really spoil my playthrough of this mission. And it's very easy in this game um, to get your elevations wrong, I think, with the ships and have a collision, a friendly blue on blue collision. And that's something you really don't want. So, any loads of missiles inbound on that Cylon Hydra. Those Cylon Hydras are a right pain. A right pain in the frack, shall we say. These missiles are going to take make short work out of that armour. The turrets from that smaller frigate, the adamant frigate that we've got in situ, is going to start lashing that now once the armour's down, lashing the hull. And I don't see this particularly going on for much longer. Providing nothing else jumps in. And that, I think, here is key. You just don't know. Something else could jump in. In go the missiles. Into the left hand side where there's no armour. Of course more missiles are inbound against my transports. While I'm concentrating on the Cylons on the right hand side of the screen. You know, it's very you've got to be very careful not to, not to neglect your charges. Your charges being the colonial transports that you're there to protect. And the Viper squadrons aren't doing a very good job, it has to be said from that huge barrage of torpedoes that are being fired off by the Janus cruisers. Okay, down to 15 hell on that Hydra now. So, you know, it's really dropping quickly. The adamant is lashing it. This is going to be it now. That's the Cylon host over and done with. So let's get in there and start watching the replay, which may be a, a bit of a long replay, but I think it's worth it. We've got a little bit of story here and how grateful he is and how, you know, we need the evidence to say that it, it wasn't um, 
the Vergon family. Colonial fleet is supposed to act as the right arm of the twelve colonies. If we don't have the consistent, unanimous support of all its members, oh, Lucinda Kane having her say again. And it's off to her office, her oh, missus, to discuss, you know, where Prince Stefan is going to be in the future. So let's watch the replay. So there you have it everyone, thanks very much for watching, if you're still with me, one half of an hour in to Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. Now this is the replay of the missions, right the way from the beginning, so it's Deadlock and Broken Alliance. So I hope you've enjoyed it, um, a good mission, the unlock of the Raptor has been in place, Prince Stefan has been found out, and let's hope there's more intrigue on the way. Thanks for watching, see you soon and like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Bye for now.